Welcome everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to uh, wherever you are watching this from. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Anton Page. I'm the head of sales at Solea. Solea is a surface technology company headquartered in Germany, and we are specializing in thin film deposition and surface treatments. Today we are presenting Avio M300, the vacuum coating systems for high performance optic filters. Just a little housekeeping before we get started. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the chat box um, in your webinar control panel. We, we have our colleagues from, um, from product management and process technology sitting in the chat and responding throughout the webinar. Um, at the end of our presentation, we will pick um, the most interesting questions and discuss them also here uh, with you in the webinar. The chat is in private mode, so don't be afraid to, to post questions that interest you. We'd love to hear from you. If uh, posting questions in the chat is not your thing, I'd like to encourage you to send an email to um, the email address you see on this uh, first slide and get in touch with me directly. I will be um, responding within a day or two. Now, with, um, without further ado, I will start the presentation. For those who, who are just joining us, welcome again to um, today's webinar on Avio M300, the vacuum coating system for high performance optical filters. My name is Anton Page and I'm the head of sales at Solea. With me today is my colleague Lucas Hell from our process technology department. And um, I will start today's presentation with a short company introduction, followed by part one of this webinar. Um, that will focus on the Avio M300 thin film coating platform. In part two, Lucas will provide you with insight from some of our recent process technology developments. Solea was founded in 2007 in Dresden in Germany and has since then grown its subsidiaries and partner locations to a worldwide presence to serve customers all over the globe. The story of Solea started as specialized coating systems provider for R&D and pilot productions. With recent and new applications in the process in the precision optics markets beginning to emerge, we saw the opportunity to enable manufacturers with tools that deliver much better film quality, very high throughput and lower production costs than traditional coating systems. Therefore, We've been refocusing our business to concentrate on this sector. Our main two locations are the technology centers in Germany, one in Kesselsdorf, close to Dresden, and one in Karlstein, close to Frankfurt am Main. With technology in focus, it is our motivation to set new standards in vacuum coating technologies. At Solea, we offer our customers state-of-the-art industrial solutions for all your requirements as a one-stop shop solution with a clear focus on the development and applications of innovative thin film technologies we support our customers in a highly competitive market with process development in various thin film deposition technologies and applications we develop and manufacture vacuum and surface treatment equipment to serve as production tools r&d tools in customized specialty equipment. Our mission is to support our customers success in very competitive markets with innovative in film technologies. Our main activities focus on being the first in exploring new techniques and serving next generation applications of high precision thin film coatings, sputtering technologies and functional and optical layers. Our focus is to enable our customers to successfully commercialize their new product. With this in mind, we develop, engineer and manufacture vacuum equipment and thin film deposition tools and provide a wide range of customer support. Our market activities focus mainly on precision optics, optoelectronics and sensor applications. Especially in the precision optics market, during the past years, we've seen rapid growing demand for ultra-high precision coatings for a variety of applications. 
due to increasing use of optics and other optical technologies. These applications are a natural fit for our ultra high precision optic coating tool and require high throughput and low cost of ownership advantages that Solea provides. Second, thanks to global photonics mega trends, it is a market with extraordinary growth potential. Think 3D sensors, 5G networks, LiDAR, laser products, and more, all enabled by photonics and new optic technology. While some of these markets are just starting to move into volume, especially 5G and increasing data traffic on fiberglass networks, the rapid adoption of 3D sensing and imaging technologies in consumer electronics and cars, but also, and more recently, the demand for advanced spectroscopy and medical diagnosis equipment in healthcare triggered by the COVID pandemic. All this is pulling more advanced optical filter applications and the need for advanced coating equipment. Driven by these market developments, Solea has developed a complete suite of different coating platforms for the full range of applications from development stage to high volume production, from single substrates to high throughput, from ultra high precision to very large substrate sizes. We designed these systems to offer manufacturers and OEMs a high performance alternative to evaporation for their coating requirements. It consistently delivers on every important metric for ultra high precision film deposition, excellent process stability, superior film quality and high productivity. On this slide, you see a selection of our product portfolio that focuses on high precision optical coatings. On the left side, with our Avio series, we offer inline coating and from substrates of sizes up to 1600 millimeters times 1800 millimeters. The Avio platform is perfectly suited for large area coatings and high throughput for mass production. The field proven production design offers the possibility to configure this inland platform to the most demanding process requirements and continuously produce dense and stable films at highly competitive cost of ownership. The Alasco platform that you see represented on this slide on the right is a versatile optical coating tool for various substrates up to 200 millimeters in diameter. The modular and scalable cluster platform can facilitate various coating technologies and it offers outstanding flexibility, therefore. And with almost endless upgrade options, it is ready for future application requirements. The newest addition to our high precision coating product family is the Avio. You see in the middle a representative picture of the Avio system. The Avio demonstrates excellent process stability and produces superior film qualities. All this at outstanding productivity levels. The Avios modular design allows for unique flexibility and overall performance characteristics. And therefore, in the following section, we will dive into some of the key features of the Avio platform. With this, I'd like to switch gears and move to part one, the Avio M300 platform for ultra high precision coatings on up to 300 millimeters. In the following slides, I'd like to introduce you to the Avio system and zoom into some of the most interesting and key features and benefits of the system. The Avio M300 is a unique production tool that combines exceptional process technology and outstanding hardware engineering. With the Avio M300 sputtering tool, we offer our customers a highly flexible platform that provides excellent process stability for high precision thin film coatings at outstanding productivity levels. The system can be fully automated for 24-7 HVM production environments with key differentiators that include a unique turntable configuration for flexible loading of substrates, automated loading and process control capabilities, high speed on substrate temperature measurement, in situ optical monitoring, setup for high quality optical coatings, for example, amorphous silicon, RCH, as one example here. The Avio platform is utilizing the unique karst deposition process 
and can achieve layer properties far beyond those of reactive spattering. In combination with the dual rotary magnetron setup, this enables an extremely stable process environment and at a very attractive cost of ownership. During the design of this tool, special emphasis was placed on its highly modular design for fast and easy maintenance and upgradability to ensure readiness for future demands. Here on this slide, you can see a depiction of the main components of an Avio M300 system. From the beginning, the system was designed as a modular platform for ultra high precision optical coatings with the capacity to grow with future demands. In the basic configuration, it is equipped with two dual rotary magnetron stations and one plasma source. In total, up to four dual magnetron stations and two plasma sources can be installed in order to increase throughput significantly or to add up to four different materials to your mix. In C2, optical monitoring is available and can be customized with monochromatic or broadband light sources. Substrate loading can be done semi-automatically or fully automatically. For fast and precise heating, a quartz infrared heating lamps are provided and combined with an ultra-fast localized temperature measurement. The modular design of the Avio M300 is a major benefit for our customers. A dedicated suit of process equipment can be easily retrofitted to the absolute feature uh, to, to make it absolute future proof. Easy increase of throughput or high material flexibility, as well as fast and easy maintenance, are also key benefits of the Avio M300 production system. Beyond semi manual and automatic segment handling, we provide our customers with customizable handling solutions like integrated temperature control in the loading station or specific requirements for semiconductor applications in clean room spaces. Another key feature for the Avio series is the rotating turntable, which you see here depicted on this slide as a schematic. Um, the unique substrate segments um, that are housed in this rotating, rotating table provide an option for immediate changes of substrate formats without any hardware change of the tool. The substrate segments also act as a sputter shield, so cleaning of the substrate area is done in no time by exchanging the segment sets. The absolute process stability of the Avio M300 system is displayed in this set of measurements um, shown on this, on this slide. In this, um, you see several diagonal lines that represent the spectral position at 50% transmission of a 26 layer low pass filter. The low pass filter was coated in four consecutive runs and all substrates have been measured in radial and tangential direction. Exemplary the center points of the two substrates as shown in the sketch on the right side of your screen on opposite turntable positions to show for most variety and all four runs are included in this diagram. So basically what this shows is a result of all measurements points of all four runs with 24 substrates per batch in an Avio. The, all these measurements fit into a tolerance level of plus minus 0.3% measured at the transmission point of 50% in this graph. With this, I've come to the last slide of the section. Um, here you see the key characteristics of the Avio M300 at a glance. So basically, if I summarize, the Avio M300 stands for outstanding film quality with uniformities at or below 0.3%. It produces reliably dense, stable and low defect films that result in, in shift-free results. It is enabled by in-situ process automation and optical monitoring to give you an extra notch in process control. The process we, we run on the Avio is based on compound-assisted reactive sputtering which um, compared to other sputtering processes by being less sensitive to equipment and process temperatures and to cathode and machine conditions 
is a superior choice for your process while offering an economic advantage in addition by using the target material to its full extent. The Avio M300 also utilizes a sputter up configuration that helps eliminating particles on your substrates. Further, we apply dual rotary cathode arrangements. And in terms of productivity, a fully automated loading system can be added to the Avio to enable 24 seven production without um, process controlled by human operators needed. High deposition rates are achieved up to 0.6 nanometers per second, which roughly equals two micrometer film deposition in two hours uh, per hour. Fast process adoption is guaranteed, so test runs are not needed. One major feature of the Avio system is its flexibility, and it's demonstrated in production with a wide variety of thin film materials adopted and proven on the Avio system. The system can, can host up to four different materials or a multiple of a given number of materials to increase throughput or to increase variability in your process. Substrates can be hosted at different sizes and shapes, up to 300 millimeter substrates in a number of 12 wafers per run. With this, I'd like to switch to my colleague, uh, Lucas, who will guide you through part two, the Avio M300 and recent updates on process technology development. Thank you, Lucas. So uh, thank you, Anton, for the part one of this presentation. Um, <clears throat> I will keep going with part two, um, in which I want to present uh, you some results from uh, the process technology point of view. And so uh, we have to answer one question, what products or processes can you achieve with an Avior M300? And uh, as we have seen and heard, uh, the Avior is a machine, a high vacuum machine, uh, with which, which uses the bipolar pulse DC sputter. And uh, therefore almost everything, uh, every material can uh, be deposited. But uh, as we have said, we have specialized in the high performance optic coatings. And therefore we, we want to present you two different processes. Um, and these are the NIR bandpass filter and the um, CWDM filter. Um, in general, the NIR bandpass filter um, you, um, is used in, for many applications in the infrared wavelength uh, region. Um, they are co key components for optical measurements. Uh, that means uh, advanced sensor technology. Um, also distance measurement like uh, LIDAR and uh, TOF and or uh, specific systems for gesture recognition. For example, the face recognition in, in, in your smartphone. Um, the special characteristic of these filters um, allows an accurate distance measurement at low light intensity conditions, uh, measurements with higher sensitivity and uh, higher precision at normal signal light levels. Um, for the CWDM filter, it is to say that um, it is a subtype of a, a WDM. A WDM is a wavelength division multiplexer, and these are used to combine or separate optical signals with different wavelengths. The C in the CWDM stands for coarse, and uh, the CWDM are multiplexers uh, for separating or merging signals with a channel spacing of 20 nanometers. Um, you use them in CWDM transmission systems, cable television networks, and so on. Um, yeah, and it's maybe important to say that for us, uh, the CWDM filter development is an intermediate step on the way to uh, DWDM, uh, which is um, significantly, uh, or which 
provides significantly smaller channel spacings um, and you use them for the 5G. So um, before I start to present you some results, uh, we have to understand um, the, some uh, points and so I have to clarify three questions to understand the results and also the achievements uh, we made in the last month. Um, and the three questions are, what is actually an NIR bandpass filter? How can uh, that be realized and which properties are important uh, or critical? To answer the uh, first question, yeah, you can look on the uh, right side. Uh, you have a coordinate uh, system with the x-axis is the wavelength the y-axis is the transmission and uh, a band pass filter in general consists of a stop band and a pass band and the NIR band pass filter lies in the near infrared region. How can that be realized? Uh, we said we need a filter to allow uh, some wavelength to pass and uh, to forbid some wavelength to pass through your filter through your uh, filter system. Um, for the NIR bandpass filter, um, you need at least two materials with different refractive yes, indexes. Anton, Anton, hast du leise mal? Kannst du dich muten? Um, yeah. Um, so we um, need two materials with different refractive indexes um, so we can provide reflection and diffraction on the interfaces and the um, different thicknesses of the layers um, and you can calculate that and um, with that diffraction and reflection you can uh, choose or um, control which wavelength uh, should pass and uh, which shouldn't. Um, most important is the uh, the substrate. You need a substrate um, on the uh, on which you can deposit your filter system. In our <coughs> um, um, hydrogenated amorphous silicon NIR bandpass filter, uh, we use this as high end material. The uh, hydrogenated uh, amorphous silicon for the low end material, we use this, the silicon dioxide and a substrate. Um, we use a ST 263T echo glass. Um, then one has to say that some filter systems are much more complicated or complicated, so you, you need to develop um, your um, yeah, filter system, your filter uh, process. And how do you do that? Um, you have some steps. The first step is the filter specification. You get, for example, from a customer who um, tell you what he wants um, from your filter system. Then you have to design uh, a layer stack. Um, therefore, you can use um, many software tools um, which calculate you the, the right uh, filter system. Um, Yes, it is also to say that you um, have to put something into because simulations, I think everybody knows that, uh, are only as accurate as your inputted data. And so you have to know um, the optical properties of, your, of the materials um, you deposit with your machine. And these um, uh, properties you can put into the design, put into the calculation, and then you get the design. Uh, when you have a, a good design, you can process the filter. <clears throat> and after that, you have to analyze it uh, to uh, evaluate um, if it fulfills the specification. If not, you have maybe to redesign, to um, change some process parameters, and so on, um, until the point you are satisfied with uh, yeah, your product or your process. <clears throat> so we uh, came to the last question, uh, which properties um, are important and critical for an NIR bandpass filter. On this slide, I 
put the most important properties together. Um, we can start with above. Um, uh, we, we again see a coordinate system with a wavelength on the x-axis and the transmission in the y-axis. And the first um, very important property is the central wavelength. And uh, I think everybody knows that. But um, uh, to reach the um, exact uh, central wavelength, it's, it's important and crucial for the application you are making for the filter for. For example, um, for some face recognition uh, systems, you need some wave, central wavelength from uh, uh, 940 to 960 nanometers for some leader um, <clears throat> sensors. Um, you are um, more than in the in the lower 900 um, nanometers in the in that range. And um, yeah, it's it's very important to control the that with every run you uh, are on the same central wavelength. Um, then also very important is, uh, is the transmission of the passband, um, the, also the average uh, values, the maximum uh, values and also the minimum values. Commonly for the NIR bandpass filter, uh, you need something uh, more than 95% to 96% in average. And if you are not able to reach it, um, yeah, it can, uh, the, the causes can be uh, on many things. For example, your design doesn't fit uh, enough with your materials you deposit, uh, or your absorption is too high because in our case, we have uh, silicon dioxide. Um, if it is not, um, the oxidation is not enough, then you have absorption. Or um, also with your uh, high N material, in our case, the hydrogenated uh, amorphous silicon, um, you have to realize, uh, or you have to to um, put hydrogen in the in the in the um, layers, so you can reduce your absorption, but um, also not too um, uh, too much because then your uh, refractive index become too low. So you have to uh, optimize your process so that you have a very good trans. Parents, uh, transmission. Sorry. Then also very important are the pass band width and the and the stop band width. Um, you see also here. Um, yeah, it's clear that uh, that depends on uh, also on the application you um, are the are making the filter for. Um, yeah, and the last thing uh, is um, the blocking the blocking of your stop band is also very important because uh, you don't want to uh, to to allow some wavelength to interfere with your um, pass band and therefore your blocking has to be very good and to achieve all of that uh, you need first a good design uh, and also the real properties again uh, has to fit with your uh, with your design with with the data you put in your design and uh, now we, uh, I would like to speak about the, the picture below on the right side. Um, above, I have shown you a square filter. Almost, that's almost impossible because you would need um, very, um, too much layer for that. And therefore, um, your filter is um, not, not a perfect square, but um, you have to uh, guarantee that the flank has to be as deep as possible. And um, uh, to indicate that, we, we have uh, the slope uh, where you can uh, see how uh, steep is your flank. Um, then the next point is the angle of incidence shift. Um, that is for NIR bandpass filter also very interesting and important because um, for in the in, in the sensor technology and also for recognition systems uh, you never need only one angle of incidence uh, but you need a range of angle of incidence for example when you have a your smartphone and has uh, you have uh, you uses um, the face recognition and 
and if it would work only with one AOE, it would, um, I think, never work because you never have has the perfect angle um, when you look at it. So to uh, guarantee that it works properly, um, you have to assure that um, not only at an angle of incidence of zero percent, um, your filter performance is good, but also um, with an angle of incidence of 30 degrees. Um, yeah, and it is clear that the um, it's important that the um, central wavelength shift is not too high. Um, commonly, you it's it's good if you are under uh, 11 nanometers. Um, and the filter performance, as I said, has to be uh, also very good. Um, yeah, and also in our development, we, we had some troubles within uh, to uh, realize or to, to guarantee these uh, uh, to, to come under the 11 nanometers. But uh, we saw, uh, for example, that the higher the refractive index is, uh, the smaller is the uh, angle of incidence shift. Um, yeah. So the, the, the last property, the last important critical property you see uh, below on the right, uh, left side um, is the war pitch. Um, that phenomena uh, occurs with uh, very thin substrates and um, yeah, in the standard technology, it is so that on your front side, you have uh, your filter system on your back side, maybe a really easy air coating. And um, if one of the um, sides have a have a, a greater total thickness, then um, it can occur that you have warpage. Um, commonly, also um, under uh, 11 millimeters is a, is a good warpage uh, you get for an uh, these days for an NIR bandpass filter. Um, the warpage comes from the defects in the amorphous silicon, uh, which create uh, tension uh, in the material. Um, yeah, and also um, a realization for, for us in our development was that uh, we can influence the warpage uh, with the process pressure. And uh, yeah, we see that it had a great influence uh, of the built-in tension. So um, this was the uh, most important critical uh, properties. Um, and what is our solution or our results now? Um, it comes with the X39 and X41 technology. Some basic properties at first. Um, both technologies works with a 20 to 40 uh, layer stack. Um, uh, RZH and SEO2. And each of the stack is designed with OptiLayer. That's our software we, we use a lot and we, uh, yeah, we had great experience with it. Uh, we reached the position rates of nearly uh, 1.6 nanometer per second for the um, RZH and um, 0 0.8 nanometer per second for the uh, silicon dioxide. Um, at this time, we <clears throat> Uh, for uh, uh, we use this for our substrates um, uh, uh, glasses with a diameter of 200 millimeter and with uh, 0 0.2 millimeters in thickness. Uh, the process stability for both technologies uh, are provided only with time control. Uh, our machine is very stable, and um, yeah, over the time we um, yeah we learned to control uh, perfectly. Um, our, our processes with only the machine. Um, yeah, the X39 we see on the uh, right side uh, above the technology um, is our standard NIR bandpass filter. Um, uh, it's a high performance filter with high transmission values. And as you see, as you can see, is uh, we have a little uh, warpage there. Um, and we think a lot about it and uh, we calculated some things and try uh, some things and um, the development, um, uh, we reached the, uh, our goal with a, with a new technology, the X41, 
which has a zero bow. We have the X39 high performance NIR bandpass filter. We see it in the left side above. Uh, it's our standard NIR uh, bandpass filter. It uh, has high transmission values. Um, you can see a little warpage, but um, yeah, I, I, see, I, I show you the um, quantitative values uh, in the next slide. Um, about the warpage, yeah, we think a lot about it and um, also calculated some things and try some things and we um, uh, reached also our goal to, to make um, uh, or to decrease the warpage to zero. And that is our X41 technology you see above, um, uh, below, sorry. Um, it's our zero bow technology. Uh, it has excellent blocking properties. Um, yeah, and uh, it simplifies and enables post-processing, -pro for example, transport handling, wafer bonding, uh, yeah, or if you want to cut your, um, your filter, your 200 millimeter in uh, diameter um, into pieces, then it is much more easier to, uh, with a flat wafer than with a curved one. And this technology also um, enables us to adjust the filter shape, for example, for high-end uh, leader applications. So um, now I want to show you some uh, quantitative uh, results from these two technologies. We will start with the filter technology X39, our um, uh, standard uh, filter. Um, we have on the right side, we see a spectrum. The blue curve is uh, the spectrum uh, measured at uh, an angle of incidence uh, of uh, zero uh, degree and the orange one uh, with an uh, angle of incidence of 30 degree. Uh, the central wavelength uh, lies at 950.5 nanometers. Um, here, I can say that um, the central wavelength or the shift is not a problem um, and it depends strongly of uh, which central wavelength do you want and in a range of 900 to 1000 nanometers uh, it is not a problem for us. Uh, the bandpass length um, lies with or at uh, 32.15 uh, nanometers um, which is also in, in, the, in, the, in the specification. Uh, common is um, something about 27, 28 nanometers. Um, the transmission of uh, this filter is very, very good. Um, we have a, an average transmission over 96 per percentage. Um, and also the maximum lies at uh, over 97%. Um, the blocking is very good um, in the range of the ultraviolet uh, light to 900 nanometers. Um, at 1000 to 1100 nanometers, we, um, it's a little bit uh, weaker, the blocking, but also good uh, with an uh, optical density of over 4 in uh, absolute, uh, no, sorry, in average, in in an optical density over five in average and an optical density over three in absolute. The angle of incidence uh, shift uh, lies under 10.5, which is very good. Um, the slope is under nine, which is also very good. Um, yeah, and the warpage um, lies under 11 millimeter, um, yeah, which is an absolute standard and stable value. And to sum up, um, with the X39, we have a high transmission filter technology um, within the usual specifications. Here we see the results from our bandpass filter X41. Again, the blue curve is uh, an, an, a spectra measured at an uh, uh, angle of incidence uh, with zero degrees and uh, the orange one uh, angle of incidence 30 degree. Uh, here the central wavelength lies at 948.2 nanometers. Um, 
Yeah, and it's also the same um, that I said to the X39 that shifting the central wavelength uh, is not a problem. Um, the bandpass length um, lies at uh, 32.9 nanometers. The transmission is a little bit less than the X39, uh, but still high. It's um, over 96% uh, in average. And uh, yeah, um, the blocking is very, very good. Um, we have optical density um, over five in average and uh, over four in absolute um, in the range of ultraviolet to 900 nanometers. And also uh, from 1000 to 1100 nanometers, uh, we can guarantee uh, optical density over five in average and over four in absolute, which are very good values. Um, yeah, the angle of incidence uh, lies under 11 nanometers. Um, and as I said, that is um, yeah, very accurate and good. The slope lies under nine nanometers, which is also very good. And astonishing um, is our warp pitch with zero uh, millimeters. And uh, yeah, to sum up, uh, this uh, zero bow filter technology um, has almost the same transmission level like the X39, but with uh, an excellent blocking behavior. And uh, yeah, the warp pitch lies uh, at zero. And that was the filter performances of both um, technologies. Now we want to um, um, show you some uniformity results um, for our X41 uh, technology. Uh, we see here on the right side four curves, um, which are named uh, theta 0, 45, 90, and 135. Um, the explanation is on the left side. Uh, we have our substrate. We have the, the direction of the outer machine and the center of the turntable. And uh, the thetters are only the, dire the measurement directions. And um, yeah, you have the zero um, theta zero degree is the tangential uh, direction, and theta ninety degree is the radial uh, direction. And we can see in the, the uh, yeah, coordinate system that uh, within a spec of uh, plus minus 1.5 nanometers um, and a central wavelength of 947, uh, we license spec. Um, yeah, and uh, now uh, also uh, some radial uniformity uh, data. Um, from position to position in our uh, turntable, in our machine. We see here um, the coordinate system with 12 graphs, um, S1 to S12. The 12 stands for the position uh, um, on the turntable. We have 12 places where we can put them in. Um, and also here we see um, within the same spec as cited in this slide before, we lie uh, within the spec. Yeah, yeah that was um, the results to the um, MIR bandpass filter. Um, at the end, we want to present you also shortly um, some results from the uh, CWDM. At first, some basic parameters. Um, the layer stack is a uh, 120 to 140 uh, yeah, layer filter system. The materials are tantal pentoxide and silicon dioxide. Uh, the layer stack is designed with McLeod, also a very fine um, software with which you can work uh, really well. The, we reach here deposition rates of nearly 1.7 nanometer per second uh, for tantal uh, pentoxide and uh, 0.6 nanometer per second for silicon dioxide. At this moment, we uh, use uh, BK7 glass substrates um, with a diameter of 150 millimeters and with 10 millimeters thickness. 
And in contrast to the NIR uh, bandpass filter uh, and CVDM is a more complex filter system. Um, you have more layers, you have a smaller passband, and uh, therefore it is much more sensible to statistical layer mistakes or uh, microabsorption, micro scattering, um, and therefore to, con to guarantee a perfect control, uh, you have to use an optical monitoring system. And because um, a quarter wave design, is very well suited for an CWDM um, um, and therefore we, we use a quarter wave the, um, layer stack and therefore we can use a monochromatic optical monitoring system because um, for quarter wave designs it is very good and very accurate and uh, you can control uh, your process. Um, we use the Intellimetric system with which we um, have some hardware and software de de developments uh, so that system uh, fits perfect with our machine. In general, uh, a monochromatic monitoring system measures the intensity at a defined wavelength. Um, then you see that on the right side uh, of, the, uh, of this slide, uh, the x-axis is the time, the y-axis is the intensity in transmission. And you look at a defined wavelength, and uh, from the curve you ca you can analyze the the waveform, the the curve, and uh, with that information you can determine uh, the terminate terminal time, termination time, and um, when you want to cut your quarter wave. So, and uh, now for the results. <coughs> uh, on the right side we see the the transmission spectra of the uh, CWDM. It is um, yeah, a result without backside coating. Uh, the central wavelength lies uh, at 1414.2 nanometers. Uh, typically for CWDM, um, you have to um, reach the 4010, 410, 411. Um, yeah, this was uh, one try, but um, also like uh, the NIR uh, bandpass filter, uh, it is for us not a problem to uh, reach the right central wavelength. And we have here um, maximum insertion loss in passband uh, under uh, 0.48 decibel. Um, that's um, a, a good transmission. Um, uh, and some of our, of our customers and um, uh, yeah, info, give us also the information that this, this is a good, a good uh, transmission, uh, minimal transmission. The passband lies, the width lies um, at 15.37 nanometers, which is uh, a good uh, value and lies within the specs of many customers. Uh, commonly, uh, you have to reach over 50 nanometers. The stop bandwidth is at 22.4 nanometers, also very good. The transmission variation in passband lies uh, at uh, 0.12 decibel, which is also a very good value. Yeah, and uh, to sum up, we see, uh, and here we see also the proof, that the RVM M300 um, is also able to access uh, CWDM filter systems. And yeah, and as I said, on the long run, uh, we want to develop also DWDM, which is um, way more complicated and uh, in design and the deposition. Uh, yeah, but we are confident to reach also that goal. So that's would be everything from my side. Thank you for the attention. Okay, thank, thank you, Lucas, very much. Um, so there's, there's two things I'd like to mention at this point. So um, um, I, I'm reading the chat and uh, we, are, we are listing um, some, some discussion topics here. But before we start on this, um, I'm, I'm realizing some some viewers uh, mentioned they lost connection. So um, 
can you can you please verify that the signal is still there um, and and that you can follow us? Um, maybe maybe just a short comment in the chat. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. So so that there, there might have been some. Some individual issues, but um, as, as it seems, the, the the transmission is still continuing. Okay, as um, as promised, so we will we will pick out some questions now. We're almost at the at the one hour mark, so I, I won't extend this and, and um, take much of your precious time. Um, as mentioned in the beginning, um, we we will follow up with all questions and and according answers within a day or two at least. Um, so so let let me start. Um, Taking some of those questions we have um, received, there, there was several questions um, coming back to the configuration capabilities of, of the RVM three hundred. Um, mainly asking about the number of, of sources um, that can be utilized in in the system. Um, so basically, the the, the RVS supports four different process station hubs and two hubs for an ion so or a plasma source, excuse me. So in, a, in, in total, the Avio can support four process modules. Um, it is up to, to the user how these are configured. So in the extreme case, you could imagine having four identical um, material sources and increase the position rates and according the throughput of your system. Um, however, in most cases, this is not very realistic. So what, what we've experienced <clears throat> Requests are mainly um, to to fill at least two different materials. In this case, you could have one process module for each module uh, for each uh, material, or you could double up production capacity by increasing the position the position rates um, by by putting two times each material into Navi. Um In in this configuration, we highly recommend also using two plasma sources. Um, you could also, and we, we've experienced this with, with some customers that are not running on very high volumes. Um, there, there's requests, for example, to facilitate two different processes in, in, in one uh, piece of equipment. So you could imagine that um, on, on, on one process, you would use two materials. The other process would require the other two materials. So basically, you could cover with one machine two processes. So I hope this, this answered the question sufficiently. So to sum up, four dual rotary magnetron process stations can be added to the Avio M300 and two plasma sources can be included. Um, so I'll continue with um, maybe one or two more um, responses. So there was, there was a question on what type of cathode um, has been used for achieving the, the position rates we, um, we have shown. Um, I'm repeating, so we, we mentioned the position rates of 0.6 nanometers per second or two, roughly two micron per, per hour. So the, 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 the cathodes we've used for these, um, these, um, these <laughs> achieving these numbers are dual rotary plus DC um, cathodes. Okay. Good. Um, we're hitting the one hour mark. Um, I think the the webinar will terminate within a couple of seconds. So um, I'm repeating and um, I will be answering all questions uh, within the next hours and, and, and day. So before before we end, I'd like to thank you once again for, for your time, your attention, and, um, and your interest to, to post questions on this topic, your interest in Solea. And um, I hope to hear from you soon. Um, on this slide, again, you see the, the my, my my email address here at Solea. So don't hesitate. If there's any more questions after the webinar, feel free to send me an email and um, I'll get back to you as soon as possible.